First off, what does the pen tool do? It makes vector information, which means if you make a path, you can zoom in on it as much as you want, and you're not going to see that jaggedness, that kind of roughness in there. Where might the pen tool be required? Paths, specifically clipping paths. Like let's say you're doing a job for the Metro catalog and they got that bottle of shampoo and with the pen tool, you can cut out around it. You'll have a path in there, which they will use as a clipping path. They'll send it into InDesign or Cork Express or whatever page layout program they're using and they'll tell it to use that clipping path. Anything outside the path will be gotten rid of. So let's say you had your set set up. You got the lights going. You got a little seamless there. Maybe you left something on the set and it's right beside the bottle of shampoo. You don't have to clone it out or anything because once you cut out that bottle of shampoo, shampoo with the path, they'll tell it anything outside the path, just get rid of it. They'll drop it onto their white background, everybody's happy. In that case, you kind of have to use the pen tool to create it. I mean, you could make a selection with like a lasso and try to tell it to convert that into a path. It's going to be rough. There's going to be a whole lot of cleaning up required, in which case you might as well know how to use the pen tool anyway. So let's take a look at the pen tool. Um, pop into Photoshop and we're, we'll start just by making a new document. File, new, and let's just make a letter size. If you go into the print there, it'll default to letter, which is eight and a half by 11, 300 pixels per inch. It really doesn't matter too much what size you make it. And you'll notice in the handouts, there's a thing called pen tool notes. We're gonna talk about all of that, but that's just something you can hang on to as a reference. How do we get to the pen tool? Anybody know the keyboard shortcut to get to the pen tool? Hit P and there's the pen tool. And you'll notice that you see the pen tool with this little kind of asterisk beside it, a little snowflake icon. That means that you're about to start making a new sub path. It may be a bad thing. If you're trying to cut out, let's say there was that bottle of shampoo here and you're cutting out, cutting out, cutting out, cutting out, and you get part way through the bottle and then you, oh, maybe I'll go back and retouch something. Maybe you saw like a piece of whatever on the bottle. So you grab your clone stamp, you clone that out and you come back to the pen tool you might notice that this asterisk appears again. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I was cutting out that bottle of shampoo. So I do a click, click and a eh, click and a eh, and a eh. And then, well, first off, I don't see anything appearing in my layer here. Where, where's my path? Yeah, it's in the paths panel. And look at this, it made something called work path. Now, two things to be aware of. First off, a work path is in constant danger of being destroyed. Like let's say I spent a, a long time making this like fabulously amazing path for this um, you know, bottle of shampoo here. And then I, oh man, there's a little smudge on the shampoo. So I pop back over my layers, I clone out the smudge, then I pop back to my paths. Watch this work path here. <gasps> it's gone. I just did a click and it disappears. Like I said, a work path is always in danger of being destroyed. If you want to keep that path, name it. Let's say this is the shampoo bottle. Now, if I click off of it, pop back to my layers, do some, you know, clean up on the shampoo bottle, pop back to my paths, it doesn't disappear. This has been saved. It makes a new work path, which I can do a whole bunch of stuff on. And here's where I want to show you losing the connection with the last point that I made. Notice how if I click now, it connects up with that last point. If I click again, it connects up with that last point. I'm connected to this point. I'm associated with that last point there. But if I click somewhere else, I pop back into my layers, do a little bit of stuff, come back to my path. Even if I click on the right path and I hover over, uh-oh, look at this. There is that little snowflake icon again. The asterisk is back. I'm no longer associated with that last point. If I click over here, I've got a big gap in between my points. To get that back, hover over the last point that you were on. So I click on here, and when I hover over the last point, see how I go from a snowflake icon to that little chain link icon. If I click now, I've reassociated with that last point and I can continue on. So if at any point you notice that little snowflake icon, go back to the last point you were on, click on it, and then continue on. All right, now let's see if we can make a circle. So make that new document, grab your pen tool, P on the keyboard, and imagine, just visualize that circle. So there's where my circle is gonna be. And it's probably gonna be a crappy circle, but it's okay because we can clean that up. So picture that circle in your mind, go to the top of the circle, and click. Now, having just clicked, I have established a point. And to make the other side of the circle, we want kind of a, a quarter turn all the way around with a nice radius to it. If I just click, I'm gonna have a point here and a point here, and it will connect them with a straight line. So don't do this, but watch what happens. If I just click over here, boink, it just connects it with a straight line. But if I click and drag, here's the key. When you're doing a curve, if you click and drag. If I go straight down, look at what it does. If I go up, it makes a curve the wrong way. If I go sideways, it makes a curve the wrong way. But if I go straight down, 
interesting. As I pull downward, and get a little wibble around, just see what that path is doing. As you go straight down, it creates a curve. And confusingly, you may notice that you now have three lines. So I did a click up here, click. And in my paths panel, you'll notice that that creates a work path. It's never too late to name your path. In fact, I should probably name it now. I'm going to call this circle, because again, I like to be creative with my namings. Just double click the name of the path, call it circle, and hit OK. Now, naming the path may have lost you the connection with your last point. No problem. If you see that snowflake icon, go to the last point until you see the chain link icon and simply click on it to reestablish the connection. The bottom of the circle, let's visualize that. So here's the top, curves around, it'll come to about here, but let's talk about what's going on with these squares and circles and lines and curves. This path so far consists of two points, this one up here and this one down here. This is a handle, this is a handle, and they relate to this point in the middle. Because I had this selected, I can see both of the handles. If I only had this one selected, I would only see one handle because this handle is controlling this curve. How is it controlling that curve? Let's talk about this for a second. Imagine that this point here is actually a cannon and it's firing its cannonball towards this point. But this point has gravity. So this cannon goes boom, thump, and it sticks down to here. The length of this arm is kind of like how much gunpowder you're putting into the cannon. So if I wanted that curve to go further out, if I pull this out, oh, look at that. It's like having more gunpowder. Boom, thump, back down to there. So the length of this handle, let me just step backwards here. When I do a click and a drag, if it's a really short handle, not a lot of gunpowder, boom, thump, over to there. If I click and I drag further, the more I pull, first off, weird thing, I'm pulling down and that top handle is going up. If I go left, the top handle goes right. If I go right, the top handle goes left. So this is how you can make that curve. If you're cutting out like the tip of an egg, there's a tip of an egg curve. If you're cutting out a beach ball, there's a beach ball curve. If you're doing like a, a snow hill, there's the top of the snow hill and down it goes. So by pulling this around, you can get different curves. Now, if this handle here is creating this part of the curve, when I get to the bottom of my circle, do you think I'll need to drag? It's the click and the drag that creates these handles. If I simply clicked, we had no handle, no handle, and a straight line between. The click and the drag is what pulled these handles out. Do you think I need to click down here? Well, there's already a handle there. So this point actually has two handles associated with it. So if I did a click down here, straight line, except this has that little cannonball firing line, it would actually make a curve as well. So give this a try. Visualize where the bottom of the circle is and just click. Now, like I said, it's probably going to be a crappy circle. Mine, you can see, looks more like, I don't know, a chin. But we can fix it afterward. We've done the top. We've done the right side. We've done the bottom. Let's go over to the left side here. Do you think we'll need to click or click and drag? I think we'll need to drag this time. Look at this. There's no handles on this. If I just click, there'll be no handles on that either. It would be a straight line. I think in this case, we're going to have to click and drag to put some kind of a handle on this. Watch what happens if I just click. Simply clicking makes straight lines, OK? Because this one has no handle associated with it, I need a handle over here. So I will click and drag. And the last one that I create, and here's, here's how you end up a path. If you need to make a closed shape, go to the point you started with. And when you hover over, look at that icon that appears. That little circle means that it's going to, are you ready for this? Close the path. Now, it's not, okay, it's not a circle just yet. I've got like a lopsidedness. You may have some little pointy bits. It's okay, we can move this stuff around. There's nothing about a path that is permanent. You can add points, you can take points away, you can break arms if you have to. What tool do we need to move things around, do you think? Well, it looks like this, and in fact, if I clicked on this, it would get me the direct select tool, but you can grab it from the keyboard. Give this a try. Hold down the command key and look at what your cursor becomes. It becomes that little white direct select tool. So you can temporarily grab the direct select tool just by hitting command. You can modify a path while you're making it. Like here we've already closed it off. I could have been moving these things around while I was making the path. Now let's say I wanted to move one of these points. Maybe I think that this one here is a little bit too high. Maybe I need to drag it down. First off, 
look at this. Notice how each of these squares is solid. It means that they're all equally selected. So if I simply grabbed one, if I hold down the command key, there's my direct select tool. If I grab one of these squares and move it, whoa, the whole path moves because all of these points are selected. If I only want to move one point with this direct select tool, with the command key held down, I just click, boink, on that point. And you'll notice that all the other points are now hollow. So if I grab this point now and move it around, look at that. I can make it a pointy chin. I can make it a not so pointy chin. So you can move these things around to get them back into where they should be to make your proper shape. This point up here is looking too high compared to this one, so maybe I'll grab it and move it down. You can change the lengths of the handles. You can move the handles around. Nothing permanent about a path. It's always editable. Oh, and also I should probably name my path. I'll call this circle. Now guys, take a look at this. What if I wanted to get rid of one of those points or to add a point? Watch what happens if I hover over top of a point. See that you get the pen tool icon. Here I've got that little snowflake, meaning it's going to start making a path that's no longer associated with the circle here. But if I hover over this point, I get that little minus sign. If I click, boink, it subtracts that point. If you hover over a point, you'll see that minus, and if you click, it'll disappear. If you want to add a point, maybe I, I couldn't quite get the right shape. Maybe I was cutting out an egg and I didn't have enough points. Look at this, if I hover over the path, do you see that little plus sign that appears? If I click, <laughs> boink, it adds a point to the path. So you can add and subtract points as you go, as you think you need. So guys, let's move on to the path practice document and let's see if you guys can make an oval. You'll notice in there, there's a file called pathpractice.tiff. And on this pathpractice.tiff file, we have an oval, a squiggly line, and a wibbly line. Let's see if we can make a path for each. Now guys, you notice when you made that circle, it automatically made a path layer in the paths panel. If you want to make a new path, like say you want two path layers, maybe you want two paths and each one on a separate path layer, watch this. I'll just do my top path here, do a click, click and a drag, do a click, click and a drag, and a click to close that off. I'm going to name this one Oval. And if I leave this path selected, see how it's kind of highlighted in a light gray here? If I leave this path selected and I go down to my squiggly path, you'll notice that it starts making it on the same path layer. If, however, I click off of the path, see how it's no longer highlighted in gray? Here it's highlighted in gray, here it isn't. Now, with it not highlighted in gray, I can start a new path for my squiggly path, which I can then name squiggly path. So, for each of these, make a new path. So you have an oval path, a squiggly path, and a wibbly path. You can call them whatever you want. I don't think wibbly is actually a word. Some of them you might find are easier than you think. Like the, um, the squiggly path here, if you do a click to start your path, the top will need a click and a drag, but you've already got a handle here, so that maybe just a click there. Click and drag, click. Click and drag, click. And guys, you can edit paths while you're making them. Like you notice on the top one here, I kind of messed up and it, it, this handle was a little bit too long. I don't have to wait until I'm done the path to go back and fix it. If I hold down the command key, I can temporarily get the direct select. I can click on this point and I can shorten up that handle and continue on where I left off. So you can edit paths at any time. All right, let's take a look at the eggs. In the paths panel, ultimately we want to have three different paths. One for the left egg, one for the middle egg, and one for the right egg. I'm going to put some text up here to show you what they are. This one here is chicken. This one here was a chicken I had many years ago named Coco. And this is a duck egg. And on the paths panel, first off, hit P on the keyboard. And when you're making the curves, you would think that these would all be like, you know, perfect parabolas or, you know, but, but maybe I do a click here and I come over to here, I can't get something that matches up. Don't forget, first off, you can go back and edit these things afterwards. Like if you hold down the command key at any point, you can grab these points, you can move them around, you can grab the handles, you can move them around. 
And if you need to, you can add more points. So let's say I'd gone around and around, and I tried to do it in only three points. And I played around with these, and I just couldn't get it to line up. If you hover over the path, you can add more points. When you see that plus sign, there's a new point, which can also be moved around. But see how few points you can do it in. Like I said, if you use too many points, like let's say, actually, here's an example of too many points. Here, this is where someone cut out the cat. And you might think, well, I could just do a point, 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 point. And if I do enough points, it'll simulate the curves, which indeed it would. Um, you might, you know, each one will be kind of a flat line jumping over to the next one. The problem with doing it in a whole bunch of points, though, is first off, the client will see it and they will realize this person does not know how to use the pen tool and they probably won't hire you again. Plus, when they send this to the pre-press operator, the guy who's going to be making the plates that are going to go onto the printing presses, the guy's going to put it through his RIP software, RIP, Raster Image Processing, converting it into the raster file that's going to go into the halftone dots. It's going to take a long time for it to render this stuff out, and he's not going to be pleased with you. Um, so the whole point of the pen tool is those beautiful, graceful curves that you can create with it. So to see how few you can do, and again, I'm not trying to you know, brag here or anything, but here's an egg where I was able to do the egg in four points, and then with a little more finagling, three points on the egg, right? I'm just saying. So see how many or how few you can do. Now you notice that this handle is quite long because it had to fire that cannonball quite a bit to get it to drop right down onto that point over there. But you know, three points, just saying. So see what you can come up with. And in the end, you should have something like this in your path panel, a chicken egg, a cocoa egg, or a duck egg. Or you can just put chicken, cocoa, duck, up to you. Uh, Coco was a chicken that I had many years ago. She was um, a silky chicken. Uh, my daughter named it, yeah. Uh, no, it's a silky. Um, my daughter names chickens weird. She has a chicken now that she's named Nugget. She's a little demented. <laughs> my daughter and the chicken. Guys. If you start making a, a path, let's say I, I did the chicken egg and then I went on to the cocoa egg, but let's say I still had the chicken egg layer highlighted. See how it's still kind of lit up there? If I start making a new path, it will also appear on the same path layer as the chicken egg. Not a problem. Watch this. Once I close it off and I'm like, I'm going to call, it, oh, look at that. I did it on the same layer. Not a big deal. If I have my pen tool and I hold down the command key, there's my direct select, just like the marquee tool, if I click and drag, I can encompass this entire layer, and there's all four points. I can edit, copy those points, click off the layer here, new layer, path one, paste them in, boink, there they are. Now, they still exist on this layer as well, not a problem. I can pop up here with the direct select, command key down, and simply hit delete and away they go. So you can copy and paste the points from one layer to another. So if you do accidentally put them all on one layer, select each path, copy it, paste it onto a new layer, delete it from the original. Guys, when you're done, this is, this is the last thing for today. So when you're happy with what you've got, save it up as a PSD file.